Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, hundreds of thousands of public scheme workers go on strike in India. Continuing with the country, two protesters killed by the police during eviction drive in the state of Assam. Hundreds of social movements boycott pro-corporate UN food summit. Lawmaker proposes two-state solution bill for US policy towards Palestine. In our first story, hundreds of thousands of government scheme workers observed a strike in India on September 24th. Among them were the community health or ASHA workers, rural child care and midday meal workers. Despite working at the grassroots, they have not been recognized as frontline workers during the pandemic. ASHA workers have been tasked with contact tracing, surveys, getting medical testing, etc. They have also been performing these duties without any safety gear in many cases, while being paid as less as $30 a month. According to the government, 100 ASHA workers have died while on COVID-19 duty. The number of frontline workers, including doctors and nurses, who have died is believed to be around 1,800. Friday's strike was organized by the Joint Platform of Scheme Workers. It consisted of scheme workers affiliated with nine central trade unions. Workers are demanding a minimum of 21,000 rupees and a pension of 10,000 rupees per month. Other demands include universal vaccination, safety gear and a COVID-19 risk allowance. All scheme workers must be recognized as workers and given insurance coverage they demand. They have also sought a 6% allocation for the health sector in the budget. Families of all frontline workers must also be paid the promised 50 lakh rupees in composition, compensation is under the demand of theirs. Continuing with India for our next story, we go to the state of Assam. At least two people were killed by the police during an eviction drive on September 23rd. Hundreds of police officers descended on the Sipajar area in Darang district. A similar eviction drive on September 20th had left around 800 families homeless. The people in the area are mostly from the minority Bengali-speaking Muslim community. The eviction drive was conducted to remove so-called illegal encroachers. The Assam government wants to repossess the land for a farming project. News website Scroll reported that residents were served an eviction notice on Wednesday. After protests broke out on Thursday, authorities reportedly assured the people that they would be rehabilitated. However, residents said that police opened fire on protesters after activists left the area. Disturbing videos showed police opening fire on a protester. The man seemed to have been shot in the chest. A group of police officers continued to beat him with batons as he lay motionless. The horrific violence follows an announcement by the BJP-led government to clear around 25,000 acres of land. As per several reports, these evictions have mainly targeted the Muslim community. In our next story, over 500 social movements, indigenous and small producers groups boycotted the UN Food System Summit. The virtual conference dubbed the People's Summit was held on September 23rd. It was hosted in partnership with the World Economic Forum instead of the FAO. The special envoy for the meeting was ahead of the Gates Rockefeller-funded Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa. A 2020 report found that hunger actually grew by 30% under AGRA. Movements like La Via Campesina have also argued that the UN summit was unaccountable. It undermined existing institutions like the Committee on World Food Security being by setting up parallel structures. Food systems for people also found that corporations like Nestle, Tyson and Bayer hold key roles at the summit. The exclusion of marginalized communities and human rights discourse was also highlighted by three UN experts. This is despite the fact that small-scale farmers produce 70% of the world's food and less than one-fourth of farmland. UN Special Rapporteur on Food Rights Michel Fakhri denounced the summit as elitist and regressive. He argued that it did not address the severe impact of the pandemic on food systems. According to the FAO, nearly one in three people globally did not have access to adequate food in 2020. And finally, Democratic lawmaker Andy Levine introduced the Two-State Solution Act in the US Congress on Thursday. The bill will require the US to officially refer to the West Bank, East Jerusalem and Gaza as occupied territories. U.S. policy will formally state that illegal Israeli settlements are inconsistent with international law. No U.S. funds or services may be used to annex Palestinian territories or violate human rights. According to the bill, the U.S. would both reopen its consulate in Jerusalem and the Palestinian Liberation Organization's mission in Washington, D.C. The bill will make the two-state solution the official U.S. policy on Israel and Palestine. However, this bill has still been criticized by activists, including the U.S. Campaign for Palestinian Rights. They argue that it fails to hold Israel accountable for its apartheid crimes. It also does not address settler violence, extrajudicial executions and the blockade on Gaza. Meanwhile, the bill maintains the $3.8 billion in US military aid to Israel. In fact, it was introduced in Congress hours before it approved $1 billion for Israel's Iron Dome missile system. The measure passed by a margin of 420 to 9 votes. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.